As I pause today to acknowledge the birthday and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I read this article. I'm Addie Banks, and this is my report. Martin Luther King Jr. was no moderate. He wanted a radical revolution of values. Rotomi Adoe, January 16, 2023. Adoe writes, for over a century and a half, the United States ignored the values of its founding documents, demanding that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. As a standard bearer and fighter for justice, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. dedicated his life to waking up the conscience of the United States and making these founding principles a reality. In the South, King was a pastor at Ebenezer Baptist Church. His fellow Black Americans lived under a set of principles instituted by the Jim Crow Doctrine, a wretched and racially discriminatory caste system designed to dehumanize them. By mobilizing the young people of the nation, King and civil rights activists alike launched a second American revolution and, and it was founded on love and nonviolence to resuscitate America's heart. On the federal holiday dedicated to Martin Luther King, it's become customary to participate in a few hours of community service or volunteering to commemorate his life and legacy. For many, this has become King's parting story, his larger than life existence as a globally celebrated political figure shows the power of his philosophy. However, in the 21st century, translation of his work has repressed his core teachings. King's critique of our political system, capitalism, and American militarism has been sanitized by a more palatable message of engaging in impactive volunteer work. Community service and community building were important parts of King's ideas. He did in fact say, quote, Everyone can be great because everyone can serve, end quote. But service was not his whole ethos. King's legacy calls on us to embark on a more challenging journey. Cognitive citizenship and a revolution of American values. On April 4th, 1967, Exactly one year before he died, King gave a controversial speech that made him practically a political pariah in his final year of life. That speech, titled A Time to Break Silence, laid out his per perception of the United States internationally. The main source of controversy in this speech was his aggressive rejection of the Vietnam War. His close advisors were concerned the speech would hurt the civil rights movement's relationship with pro-war president Lyndon B. Johnson, the signer of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and supporter of Black freedom movement. Despite this, King was undeterred. And while critiquing America's involvement in the Vietnam War during the speech, he proclaimed, quote, I am convinced that if we are to get on the right side of the world revolution, we as a nation must undergo a radical revolution of values. When machines and computers, profit motives, and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplet of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism are incapable 
of being conquered. This speech, a time to break silence, reflects the moral clarity King preached. He was cognizant of the thread of intersectionality between all injustices. King could have continued to advance the civil rights movement without bringing in the political complications of the Vietnam War. Many politicians during that time would have preferred for him to do that. Instead, King understood that in order to touch its founding values, America had to strive for equality and justice everywhere. In his letter from the Birmingham jail, King wrote, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Throughout his writings, King demonstrated a wholehearted commitment to cognizant citizenship. A concept that also defines many of his other speeches is the thread between cognizant citizenship and democratic responsibility. In A Time to Break Silence, King calls, quote, all ministers of draft age to give up their ministerial exemptions and seek status as a conscientious objector. In that every man of humane conviction must decide on the protest that best suits his convictions, but we all must protest. King's embodiment of cognitive citizenship reminds us of the wisdom of philosopher Alexis de Tocqueville, who said, quote, the health of a democratic society may be measured by the quality of functions performed by private citizens, end quote. In other words, the strength of our society is determined by how we participate in it. King believed that as Americans, it's our duty to be cognizant citizens. Every one of us must speak out when we see an injustice. The cognizant citizenship King spoke about means calling on every political leader to address the pernicious poverty and valueless violence that still has a foothold in our nation today. King's higher calling for himself and the path he believed we all should follow the road of a revolution of values through cognizant citizenship isn't without challenge. In fact, King understood it as a gargantuous weight to carry. Many remarks will be declared about who King was and what he stood for. We read about interest groups, lending his name to their agendas. Good, peace-loving Dr. King, we read. But the writer of this article wants us to remember the monumental life of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today and challenges us to strive to commemorate his untarnished message, a true revolution of American values and cognitive citizenship. He writes that as King stated in that speech a year before his death quote, I am nevertheless greatly saddened that the inquirers have not really known me, my commitment, or my call, end quote. Now that's a statement. I believe that cognitive American citizenship is a commitment to 
and responsibility for one's homeland. Putting the interests of citizens, their well-being first, all citizens. Denouncing greed, proliferation of drugs, people trafficking, exploitation, corrupted politicians and business persons, outside influencers demanding support from for their homeland by using host countries. Laws that encourage people to drop their innocent children into the hands of strangers. And this, no mandatory national race and ethnic history instruction for every elected representative in America, regardless of the level of service, in order to better serve all of the people. This year, let's look again at the dream and follow a course of cognizant citizenship. 